was the scene, August 11th, 1984, at the Long Beach Arena. Steve Timmons attempts match point for the USA men's volleyball team in the Olympic gold medal match against Brazil. The fateful serve would not be the end, but rather the beginning of a volleyball renaissance in the United States, where the sport was invented in 1895. And it would be a sparkling endorsement of the full-time Olympic Volleyball Training Center concept that was developed by the United States Volleyball Association to help its national teams achieve parity with the perennial volleyball powers of the world, the Soviet Union, Japan, Cuba, and Brazil, to name a few. Earlier in the 1984 Olympics, the USA women's volleyball team, which used a modified version of the full-time training center, captured the first Olympic volleyball medal of any kind for the United States. The U.S. women suffered through the Olympic boycott of 1980 and, with renewed dedication, regrouped to win the Olympic silver medal in Los Angeles, defeated by China in the match for the gold medal. Like their female counterparts, the USA men's team utilized a strict training regimen. Moving to San Diego in May of 1981, the USA men's volleyball team practiced five days a week between 8 a.m. and noon at the Federal Building in Balboa Park, honing the individual skills and the instinctive teamwork necessary to become a world-class volleyball team. At the end of each day's training period, the athletes would shower, have lunch, and then head to work at various career-related positions provided throughout the community by participating sponsors of the Olympic Job Opportunities Program. The Olympic Job Opportunities Program, or OJOP, was originally conceived during the administration of former President Gerald Ford as the best method of allowing our elite amateur athletes to train for Olympic competition without suffering undue financial hardship or career setback. Involving full-time compensation for career-related employment duties and a broken time work schedule that allows time off for training and competitions, the athletes of the USA men's volleyball team became productive resources and living investments in the U.S. Olympic movement for their employers, contributed to the community, and were able to support themselves and their families during the quadrennium leading up to the games of the 23rd Olympiad in Los Angeles. Such an athlete was Paul Sunderland, whose position as a management trainee and subsequently branch operations officer for Security Pacific National Bank helped support his wife and young daughter as Paul, a member of the USA men's volleyball team for 10 years, realized a lifelong goal of participating in the Olympic Games. The USA Volleyball Training Center was unique in other respects, too. Just prior to the start of the 1984 Olympics, the men's team embarked on an outward-bound survival expedition in the forbidding Canyonlands area of Utah. By making the athletes become totally interdependent, the outward-bound experience helped to additionally unify the team as it prepared for its first Olympic competition in 16 years. USA men's volleyball head coach Doug Beal commented on the unusual exercise. It was a grueling experience that we certainly don't want to repeat. It was a one-time in a quadrennial experience, but we think it's going to pay some dividends down the road. This team is going to be tough when they need to be tough. Another critical aspect in the success of the USA Volleyball Training Center was the involvement of well-known personalities who supported the concept of amateur athletics. John Davidson assisted as a special vice president for the United States Volleyball Association. Susan Anton was named the honorary captain of the USA women's team, and Tom Selleck inspired and supported the men's team as its honorary captain. The star of television's Magnum P.I. and several motion pictures, Selleck, an accomplished volleyball player in his own right, helped the team's fundraising efforts in a number of ways, such as performing in exhibition volleyball matches with the proceeds benefiting the USA volleyball program. He also posed for two best-selling posters, which have generated substantial and much-needed funding for the team. And he was personally on hand at the Olympic Games to support the team and share in the excitement as its quest for the gold medal was played out in the Long Beach Arena. Having laid the groundwork and set up the components for a successful year-round training center in San Diego, including training facilities, a sports medicine program, a corporate sponsor program, and the all-important Olympic Job Opportunities Program, the USA men's volleyball team, 
and the Olympics silver medal winning USA women's volleyball team are preparing for the 1988 Olympic Games in Seoul, South Korea. Yes, this was the scene, August 11th, 1984 at the Long Beach Arena. The USA men's volleyball team earns the first gold medal in American Olympic volleyball history, setting a new standard of excellence and providing a resounding endorsement of the permanent training center in San Diego. With the continued support of the American business community and the general public, the dream of future gold medals will be kept alive for the next generation of Olympic volleyball hopefuls. <laughs>